member of APIC, the Philippines has hosted the economic leaders meeting twice. Our continued engagement in an investment in our economic future as our country seeks to sustain our development and work towards more significant investments and a golden age of infrastructure. I have accepted the invitation to speak to APIC CEOs on dialogue with big businesses, sustain our economic gains, and contribute to the prosperity of a larger Asia economic region. I will also participate in our continuing dialogue with APIC Business Advisory Council to deepen regional economic growth integration and to promote inclusive growth. When the Philippines hosted APIC, we have put forward these important initiatives of promoting inclusive growth, investing in human capital development, and the fostering of MSME participation in the global market. In the APIC meeting in Lima, Peru, I strongly supported the APIC services competitiveness roadmap, a key outcome of our country since the services sector is the biggest contributor to our GDP. I made a strong pitch for food security to sustainable economic, agricultural, forest and fisheries, beneficial policies to MSMEs regulatory reform, human capital development and connectivity, and inclusive growth. This year will amplify that call for renewed vigor. We will continue to rate the themes of our development economic growth in order to reinforce our strategic importance to achieve the goals of realizing a prosperous Philippines with equal access to opportunities to all. As chair of ASEAN, we will use these platforms of ASEAN and APIC to promote advocacy close to the heart of every Filipino. Access to international markets of our MSMEs, a comfortable life for our people, comfortable lang, okay na ako. Not so good a life or a luxurious life. I only dream for my country a better life for our people, food security, connectivity, the role of law, anti-corruption, and regional security. At the inaugural dialogue between APIC and ASEAN, as ASEAN chair, I will engage the leaders of our greater Asia-Pacific region to commit in pursuing, to commit in pursuing our shared economic prosperity. This as we work jointly to ensure that our region is secure from the menace of transnational crimes such as illegal drug trade, terrorism, and extreme extremism, and crimes at sea, or what you would know as piracy, or piracy, if you may. Finally, we give support to our ASEAN brother, Vietnam, who holds this year's economic and the APIC chairmanship. This year is indeed a rare opportunity where two ASEAN member states chair key regional meetings, which is an opportunity to push for the ASEAN economic agenda. Upon my return, I hope to build up on the discussions at the APIC to boost the Philippines and ASEAN's agenda in our chairmanship of the 31st ASEAN Summit and related other summits. Thank you and uh, may you have a good day. Maybe I can... Uh, Secretary Andanar, uh, if you have uh, some guys who would like to ask questions, I would gladly... We have uh, CCTV. 
Mr. President, we have a reporter from CCTV to ask a question. Marami na kalinya. Isa-isa lang. Bigat ang kalaban. Afternoon, President. Um... Uh, this uh, this time in Danang will be a special meeting between APEC and ASEAN. Yes. It's an uh, APEC ASEAN dialogue, uh, leaders dialogue meeting. And I know as a chair uh, uh, person of ASEAN, you will be host that meeting. And also, Chinese President Xi Jinping will also deliver an important speech on that meeting. So I would like to know, as a chair of ASEAN, uh, what kind of expectation you will rise on that meeting and what's your expectation from a Chinese side you want to hear on that meeting? Thank you, sir. Well, first of all, they should be hearing me as I will deliver the plenary first round and maybe I'll talk about economic imbalance and the impact of globalization on those countries who are left behind. Those countries like us who export resources and they are manufactured outside of the country and we import them again, double the price of what we get when we export. These are the things that uh, globalization has created uh, a big gap. I hope that the economic uh, giants would make the adjustments Eh, total, yung kung anong ibigay nila sa atin, kita na nila yan eh. It is not taxes of the people of their own country, but rather what they have uh, maybe earned over the years as uh, they occupy a higher uh, ladder in the agenda of the economic uh, world. So, and uh, terrorism, and of course, the China Sea. It's about time that... Uh, ASEAN countries, not really to confront, but to make clear to us what China really wants. Um, I, I suppose that I bring the matter because while we were focused on the dangers of uh, North Korea regarding its uh, saber rattling and uh, lahat doon nakatingin, and I do not take it against China. Uh, he has claimed every part of it and nobody stopped him. So, tanungin ko lang siya, what are the stakes? You want to control the passage or do we have the free passage? Unbridled, undisturbed, unmolested while we use that small way from the Indian Ocean, the Indian China Pacific, which is uh, facing Palawan. Not because I'm so much interested as uh, a person, but for the sake of my country and the others who have the overlapping uh, claims. And that is why the truth is if I could only confront China, or if it is China alone, there's, there's no problem. But I said there are contesting countries which has overlapping jurisdictions. And if I engage China now, I will have to engage the five other. Uh, it, it, it would be something like a scramble there. Because if China concedes to one, Philippines, it has to concede to the others. And what will now happen to our general claim of being the economic zone belonging to my country? That's a problem. So it's about time, either in the bilateral or in the plenary, I should be bringing this uh, important matter to the surface so that we will know when uh, can we be safe in traveling uh, the China expansive? Because you have claimed it now, and I'm sure that uh, Trump now is busy talking about, you know, it's all bustering. You know, 
the real reason really is geopolitics. Nobody wants a war. I am very sure of that. China does not want it. Because if there is a bomb drop somewhere in Korea, it will be a meltdown for the rest of Asia and Southeast Asia. It's all geopolitics. The name of the game is... Uh, but in, uh, if not uh, maybe handled properly, you know, politics, political power of a country and the military might. Might is right. Right is might. It could change the whole geographical situation. Geography is always dependent on how the powers of that era handle themselves. Yeah, uh, one follow-up. Um, because uh, you will meet President Xi in APEC, and after APEC you will meet our Chinese Premier Li Keqiang here in the Philippines. Yes. And he, it's uh, his first time to pay an official visit to the Philippines. So I would like to know, like in one week you will meet the top two Chinese leaders so, uh, how do you see the future between our two countries? Look, we are all for a peaceful negotiation. Uh, it's always uh, a mouthful uh, of leaders saying, rule-based and the own clause prescribes a peaceful resolution of uh, uh, conflicts of nations. We will stick to that. We are friends with China. May otang na loob tayo. At one moment in our life, or the lives of the Filipinos, they were there to give us the arms when we had none, and we are fight fighting it out uh, in Marawi. These are the things that we cannot forget. But this, these things should not be used as, uh, not really a pawn, but as a bargaining chip on what is the greater interest of Southeast Asia, and more particularly, the higher interest of our country. I do not deny that. But let us be clear on what we intend to do here, because eventually it will affect the entire uh, Philippine archipelago. Now remember, I said it's geopolitics. But the larger portion of that really is, uh, there are so many military installations, installations and the islands are equipped with batteries. Ito man yung mga missiles and everything. Uh, they're all there scattered and Vietnam has won. I said there's an overlapping claim of uh, territory. Taiwan also is claiming the northern part which will result in a very serious quarrel with us. And on the southern part, you have the Indonesian uh, government also claiming, and the sad, uh, southern western part would be Malaysia. Uh, Singapore is, uh, and Brunei, uh, seems to be nonchalant about it because we are, they are uh, sure of their boundaries and they do not have the, uh, the slightest interest to use sea power but ours is, is strategic in the sense that uh, facing all the armaments there and brothers we have the ace and the ace is Palawan you cannot sink an island but I can always blast you off if you are there on the open seas. And that is why, let me just be frank with the Filipinos now. They say the Philippines is, is strategic. In the sense that there is the South, which is racked with insurrection, uh, extremism. So, you have to take care of... Uh, you can just imagine, I don't know, I, I, I hope it would not uh, 
But if there's a change of geography or uh, whatever uh, development there, Australia will be an isolated island. If we cannot have the control of the ships here, the Molokka Strait, it is to the advantage of Malaysia, Philippines, and the United States to see to it that the Moluccas, which connects to the Sulu Sea, to the Indo, Indochina Passage, from in the Indian Ocean going in. You know, what makes the Philippines very strategic is really Palawan. It faces the China Sea, and it is a one huge battleship which you cannot sink. Tama? Uh, P. Aranada of Rappler. Good afternoon, are the, sir. Are you with Rappler? Still? Yes, sir. Rappler, no? Yes, Paul. Good. Uh, sir, can I just go to my question first? Uh, because you're expected to meet U.S. President Donald Trump for the first time in Vietnam. Uh, so first question is, what are your expectations for this first meeting? And second question, what are the issues you plan to raise with him during your bilateral meeting, whether in Vietnam or here in Manila? Well, number one is uh, always uh, trade, because the, the, that is the, the very life of uh, nations. Then we will discuss uh, extremism, terrorism, and third, maybe, so bilateral, they might want to ask a very de uh, definitive uh, position of the Philippines vis-a-vis uh, -vis with China. Yeah. And uh, to all of these things, I would just say that uh, we all hunger for peace. And if the, we can talk about it uh, in a very civilized manner, I would be glad to participate in the discussion. So just to uh, clarify the point about China, you said you wanted to discuss with uh, President Trump their position vis-a-vis -vis the South China Sea. Yes, dispute? of course. What exactly will you tell him? What, what would you want to impart to him about this issue? China? Uh, to Trump, sir, you in China issue with Trump. Well, I, my 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 response would always uh, be based on what they have agreed on. I think they are me meeting ahead, and we will wait for the results. And I will be in a position to give him at least uh, a balanced answer. Sir, are you? you I, I am not. Uh, the Philippines is not uh, beholden to anyone. The Philippines is a sovereign state. I will not allow anybody to impose anything on my country. I will listen to you. But if it is not to the best of interest for my country, I will ignore you. Sir, just again, it may be not clear, but in your position, you you want to, uh, what what position do you demand of the U.S. or would you want to ask from the U.S. with regards to the South China Sea dispute? Are you asking them to I, take I a said side? I cannot. I, I have to hear uh, them first before I make my response, because it will be based on the outcome of their talks and the points that would touch the Philippines. I said. And I would have to decide what is best for my country alone. And it will be a decision that will promote the higher interest, the greatest interest as a matter of fact, for my country. So that's why we're meeting there. We meet as sovereigns. I will not go there as a subservient lucky of anyone including what you would like to hear from me, but which you cannot ask maybe or later on about human rights. Thank you, sir. 
You want to ask a question, I'll give you an answer. Lay off. That's not your business. That is my business. I take care of my country and I will nurture my country to help. Nobody would. Good afternoon, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, on a local, more local matter, sir, we'd just like to get confirmation. Did you ask that DDB Chair Dionisio Santiago resign from his post because of his views on the mega rehab facility in Nueva Ecija? Well, uh, ganito kasi. Uh, nagbitaw siya ng salita that uh, it is a waste of money, that it is not the uh, right approach. You know, you saw him in the previous administration. He was there. Bakit hindi niya ginawa? And to think that sabihin mo that force or uh, uh, military action alone or police action alone or both uh, endeavors working together. Eh, di ba nakita mo pa siya sa TV pinagsisipa niya yung mga tao doon? So he came up with a very incongruous statement that I was offended he could have asked me for an audience and then tell me all about it. Kaya kita nilagay dyan not to issue statements to the press. Nilagay kita dyan para magpunta ka sa akin kung anong problema natin ng sabaya natin at turuan mo ako kung nagkulang ako kung anong dapat kong gawin. But you do not go open to the press and start to blabber. When as a matter of fact, your previous action, di ba nung sa siya pa, it was caught on TV, pinagsisipa niya yung tao. And then you come up with this deal that if you try to echo what is the popular It's always what is popular. Kung sasakay ka lang dyan, me, I said, I do not, I do not have a, a, a well, I cannot be re-elected. I'm there to work. And so I will work. And I rely on my judgment. If my talent is not enough, then did you elect me as president? Is sorry. That is the only talent that I have. So But he said, if it comes to destroying my country and destroying the young, I repeat, I will kill you. Sir, have you decided? Walang ano nyan. But now, umiwas na ako, and I am really very surprised that they are still harping on me when as a matter of fact I have distanced myself from the PDEA. It's now the PDEA if it, is, if, uh, it works uh, very well then I am ready to accept. Just like in Marawi and other uh, police and military operations upon my orders I take full legal responsibility. Period. You can sue me And I will be glad to go to prison. Sir, have you decided on a replacement for Mr. Santiago? Uh, 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 let's talk about it when uh, we'll have a cup of coffee uh, in my office and I'll tell you all about it. Sir, uh, shift lang ako, sir, sa ibang topic. Kasi yung piloto, oh, nagagalit na. <laughs> sir, isa na lang po. Sir, why did you uh, order the stopping of the construction of Lipa Hats in Pag-asa Island, near Pag-asa Island? What is that? Sir, sa Pag-asa Island, sir, yung... I, I'm not quite aware of... Uh, wala akong... Is it a housing? Or... Ni, uh, Nipa, Hats, uh, Nipa Hats for fishermen because of Chinese objections. No. China never... Uh, yung in, in, in fairness to China, it never took uh, a, a strong uh, arm method. They always say... Your honorable, the start said, your honorable, can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? 
To my mind, I said, uh, uh, there are so many contesting parties there, overlapping. Maybe uh, the rest of the nation uh, thinks that the uh, problem in China si is China alone. I said, there are overlapping territorial claims there. So you have to, it's uh, better uh, understood in the light of uh, just talking to the nations. Ang China naman, they allowed us to fish and uh, they go to the Pagasa and I, I so, so might as well, uh, sabi ko, you can go there for a visit. As a matter of fact, you can say, can't with the commander there. This is a military. I, I will tell my military men to treat you to a lunch, and, but uh, do not do anything that will disturb the equilibrium now present there. Okay? Thank you. We only have one last, Mr. President, from Cedric Castillo of GMA7. Sir, good afternoon. Uh, on the filing of the Ombudsman of uh, uh, usurpation of authority and graft charges against President, uh, uh, former President Aquino. Sir, Senator Trilliana says that it sets a bad precedent that in that uh, every time an operation fails, yung Presidente daw po ang uh, fafaila ng kaso o irereklamo, sir. I'd like to get your thoughts on this and uh, would you agree with Senator Trilliana, sir? You know, that is what life is all about. Uh, for the first time, or for the second or third time, Trillanes has a good point there. Yung usurpation of authority, actually. I don't know if I'm still good at my law. But, you know, the president has the supervision and control. Supervision and control means he can overturn your decision or will decide to exercise the function itself all those under the appointed officers lahat yan sila under the control yung function ng police function ng military the, 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 the president can always intervene modify, amend or change altogether your idea. And if he decides to do the police work himself, he is the commander-in-chief. He is the head of government insofar as the police is concerned, because he's civilian in character. Na. For the military, he is the commander-in-chief. For this civil... Dalawa yan eh, ganun yan. Tumingin ka muna dito. Ganun yan. President is there. For the military, is the commander-in-chief. For the civilian sector, mayor, lieutenant, uh, gobernador, the police, because it's now a civilian uh, agency, he is the head of government. Lahat yan kanya yan. Except dito sa local officials, the president has only the supervision, meaning to say that he will oversee that everything under his supervision will do their work legally and properly. Yung mga governors, mayor, elected dyan eh. But for yung appointed ng presidente, it's being headed by a cabinet member, department of uh, whatever, transportation. He is the alter ego, the shadow of the president. So if the main figure overrules the shadow, usurpation of authority, yun ang secreto, usurpation of authority, you cannot usurp what is inherently your duty. Okay? Tapos na? Thank you so much, Mr. President. That ends our pre-departure press conference. Take off na Thank po? you so much. Yes, sir. Can I take off? Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you. Salamat po.
And that was uh, President Rodrigo Duterte there speaking at the uh, Naia Terminal in Pasay City where he is leaving for Vietnam to attend the APEC meetings. Uh, the uh, president in a speech highlighted the importance of the APEC summit where he will of course participate in a dialogue with business leaders to promote inclusive uh, growth and he says this is an opportunity to support Vietnam who holds the APEC chairmanship and push for the ASEAN economic interests in the summit. Now, uh, in the Q&A, uh, the president was asked uh, several questions by reporters. Uh, the first one had to do with uh, the possible meeting of uh, President Duterte and Chinese President Xi Jinping. And he says that he would take that opportunity to talk about economic imbalance and the effects of globalization on small countries like the Philippines. Uh, he also says that he will seek clarification uh, from Chinese President Xi Jinping on the South China Sea. Uh, to make clear to us what China really wants uh, in the area. Um, one of the questions that he would ask would be, um, does China want to control passage there or will there be free passage for the rest of us? Um, and he says that uh, he, in dealing with China, he also has to consider uh, the other uh, claimant countries in the area. Now, he also spoke about uh, the Korean Peninsula, and he says that he is confident nobody wants war regardless of the statements made by President Trump, and he says he will also be speaking to President Trump on the sidelines of the APEC meetings.